Hello, Parkway Manor. We're back with more of The Storm, written by Cynthia Ryland. Yesterday when we read, we met two characters, a cat named Pandora and a dog named Siebold. Pandora works in a lighthouse, and um, Siebold is a sailor. And chapter two ended with Siebold in a very dangerous storm. Let me go back just a few sentences. Safe harbor, Siebold repeated. And this was the last thing brave Siebold said before he was lifted and rolled over and over into the deep black sea. One might have thought the dog was forever lost, but this is not the end of Siebold's story. Chapter three, comfort. When Siebold next awoke, he wondered if perhaps the storm had been just a dream, for he found himself in a little wooden bed under a cheerful quilt, and he was no longer in the sea, but looking out at the sea, through a small window by his side. A daisy jar stood a daisy stood in a jar on the windowsill. Siebold tapped his head to be sure he wasn't dreaming. And just as he was about to try his legs on the shiny wooden floor, the door to his room opened and in stepped a cat. She was smiling and had an apron tied around her waist. In her hands was a tray of tea and biscuits. Good morning, she said, setting the tray on the table beside the bed. I hoped you might be awake. I am Pandora. Still unsure whether he was dreaming, Siebold extended his paw to, to shake hers. And I am Siebold, he said. At least I think I am. Pandora smiled. You've had a rather bad journey, she said. Oh, I thought it was my last, answered Siebold. Pandora poured him a cup of tea, which smelled like flowers. Siebold drank it gratefully. Thank you, he said. May I have more? I'm so thirsty. Pandora nodded and poured another cup. It's all that salt water, she said. I don't even know how I'm alive, said Siebold. Nor do I, said Pandora. When I found you on the shore three days ago, I was certain that you were dead. I've been here for three days, exclaimed Siebold. Yes, Pandora smiled, sleeping like a baby. Siebold shook his head. I remember going under. Oh no, my boat. Have you seen her? Not yet, said Pandora, but it may be farther down the shore. When you are able to walk, we shall go and search. Able to walk, said Siebold. Yes, your legs, said Pandora. Siebold drew back the quilt. With surprise, he saw that his left leg was bandaged and splinted from his knee to his foot. Oh, heavens, he said, but there's no pain. Shouldn't I be suffering? Pandora smiled with pleasure. I'm something of a doctor, I suppose. I've studied plants and learned there, there are some that will heal. I wrapped your leg in plantain leaves to relieve the swelling, and the splint will prevent further injury. Amazing, said Siebold. Pandora blushed with pride. And are you alone here, asked Siebold, sipping his tea, as Pandora had poured herself a cup. Yes, all alone, she said, although I do have friends who stop by this island once in a while, in a very long while, I should say, they're seasonal. Seasonal? asked Siebel. Oh, they migrate, said Pandora, so I see them only in the spring and the fall, as they make their way north or south. There is a toll, the gray whale. Wait, you know a gray whale personally, asked Siebel. Oh, yes, said Pandora. Whales are very sociable, you know, once you break the ice. Ask them about their children, they'll go on forever. And there is also Henry the Turn, she continued. He's usually so pressed for time, he doesn't even land. He simply flutters above my head and asks about my health, my garden, and so forth. And then he's off. He flies 6,000 miles every year. Really? said Siebold. Yes, said Pandora. He's quite fit. But you are alone nearly always, asked Siebold. Nearly always, said Pandora. Oh, 
Feeble shook his head. I never thought I would meet someone else like me, he said. Like you, asked Pandora. Yes, one who loves the solitary life, said Siebold. I am nearly always at sea, and nearly always alone, like you. Pandora smiled and thought for a moment. I'm not sure I love the solitary life, she said finally. I simply live it. Why? asked Siebold. To save lives, said Pandora, like yours. And she poured him another cup of tea. Chapter 4, Companion Everything at the lighthouse was different after Siebold's arrival. Mornings when Pandora awoke, she remembered she had someone else to talk to. She leaped from bed and prepared a big breakfast of hot wheat cereal with cream, apple scones, and bowls of huckleberries. She carried the tray to Siebold's room, and there they chatted all morning. <laughs> Pandora's garden grew very weedy. Then once Siebold was able to hobble about on his leg with the help of a walking stick, their talks moved outside. Sitting on large walk, <laughs> I cannot read today, boys and girls. Let me try this again. Sitting on large rocks by the water, Pandora and Siebold told each other stories of their lives and things they had read or seen and what they liked most in this world, or the least. Siebold told of his father who feared the water and would not set foot in a boat. Pandora told about her younger sister, who sewed wedding gowns for queens. They both had read fairy tales as children and agreed that the bad animals in the fairy tales were much more interesting than the good ones. And what do they like best in the world? Oh, the northern lights, said Siebold. Penguins, said Pandora. Now the least, they both agreed, were shipwrecks. It was summer and Pandora's lighthouse responsibilities were small. For two months, July and August, there was little rain and hardly any fog. Ships traveled safely and Pandora got to rest. Well, somewhat. She still had to tend to preparing for the hard winter ahead. She knew she must grow and harvest vegetables, grind corn and wheat for bread, collect and cut driftwood for the fire, now, a supply boat had already delivered the year's kerosene for the lighthouse. All depended on Pandora being ready. While Pandora gardened in the day, Siebold worked, as best as he could given his leg, on rebuilding his boat. He had indeed found it, at least most of it, farther down the shore, and though his heart broke to see it so battered, he believed he could save it. As Pandora gardened, she watched Siebold off in the distance, tending to his boat, and she felt a small emptiness in her heart. The emptiness that one feels watching a dear friend prepare to go away. Evenings, the two made a picnic on the hill of daisies, leading to the shore, and they'd watch the sun go down, painting the world pink and red. The next day, it all began again. Siebold was very curious about the workings of the lighthouse, but his leg would not permit him to climb the four steep flights of stairs. Then the ladder up into the lantern room to reach the great glass lamp. With no storms and no need for the saving lamp, Siebold sometimes forgot there was any lighthouse at all. But one day in early September, just as the geese and the mallards and the warblers were beginning to fly overhead, on their long journey south, Siebold was awakened to exactly what that enormous lighthouse was meant to do, and to just who was prepared to do it. And that is the end of our chapter. Our next chapter is chapter five, The Storm. We'll see everyone tomorrow, Friday, April 24th for our chapter on the storm. Have a fantastic day, Parkway Manor. Bye for now.